How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. We're back with topic one, stoichiometric relationships. And this is volume 10, where we introduce concentration and begin our discussion about solutions. Let's go. All right, so topic one, stoichiometric relationships, volume 10, what is molar concentration? We un need to get an understanding about what is concentration, and then we look at some of the different units for concentration. The IB understandings focus around this concept of molar concentration and what it means, and then we need to discuss some of the units, and the units include grams per decimeter cubed, mole per decimeter cubed, and parts per million ppm. We can use square brackets to denote concentration as well, and I'll weave that into the video. So what is a solution? Okay, well a solution contains a solute, which you can think of as being the smallest component of a solution, and that is what is being dissolved. The solvent is the largest component of the solution, and what the solute is being dissolved in. The solution is the combination of the solute and the solution. So if we have wine, for example, wine contains a solute and a solvent. So the solute, generally speaking, for wine would be the ethanol, the alcohol, and the solvent would be water. So we've got the alcohol, which is dissolved in the water. Now there's also other, all the other flavors and tannins and, and other components that would be in the solute as well. If we have milk, for example, milk has a solute and a solvent. The solute is the butterfat, all of the small little droplets dissolved in water. So we have this solute-solvent relationship, which makes a solution. Concentration is a measure of how much solute, either in grams or moles, per how much solution, or the volume. The volume in IB is measured in decimeters cubed, and one decimeter cubed is the same as one litre, or a thousand mils. So you need to remember that conversion. One decimeter cubed equals one liter, or one decimeter cubed equals a thousand mils. There is also another conversion that you need to know, and that is one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. A centimeter cubed is a very small amount of solution, and we would have a thousand centimeters cubed in one decimeter cubed. There's two general ways that we can determine the concentration. We can either have the mole of solute divided by the volume of the solution. We would write that as concentration equals N over V. N, the number of moles, and V, the, the volume in decimeters cubed. Another way of working out the concentration would be if we have a grams of solute. So our concentration would be grams, so a mass, divided by the volume of the solution, again in decimeters cubed. So both of those are concentrations, and we need to make sure that we read the question carefully to know which one to use. So to, to determine the concentration of solutions, we've basically got two formulas. We've got the molar concentration, which is the number of moles divided by the volume, and the units for that are big M, molarity, or mole per decimeter cubed. Or we have the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed, which would be the mass in grams divided by the volume in decimeter cubed. So you must read the, caref the question really carefully to know which one to use. And students often do the other one when they're beginning to do questions. So make sure you check, is it asking for mole per decimeter cubed or grams per decimeter cubed? So here's an example. A 2.50 decimeter cubed glass of orange flavored mineral water contains 7.5 milligrams of sulfate ions. Calculate the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed of sulfate ions in the mineral water. So the first thing we've got to do is convert from milligrams to grams. So 7.5 milligrams is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3 grams, or simply dividing by a thousand. To go from milligrams to grams, divide by a thousand. So to calculate the concentration of SO4, and I'm using square brackets here to show we're talking about concentration, it would be the mass in grams divided by the volume in decimeters cubed. So we've worked out the mass in grams above, and we've been given the volume in decimeters cubed in the question. 
So to work out the concentration, it's 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 0 0.250, the volume in decimeters cubed. That gives us the concentration of 0 0.030 grams per decimeter cubed, or g dm to the minus 3. Another example. What is the concentration of sodium chloride in a saline solution if 200 centimeters cubed of the solution contains 0.01 mole of NaCl? So this one is slightly different. We need to work out the concentration and we've been given a mole. So we can use the formula triangle to the right to try and help us with the formula. So the number of moles will be equal to the concentration times the volume, N equals CV. That's the easiest way to work out this formula. So the concentration equals number of moles divided by volume, because that's what we're after in this case, C equals N over V. We've been given the number of moles, 0 0.010 moles of NaCl. We divide that by the volume in decimeters cubed, so I've got to change centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed, so that would be 0 0.200. And then I can work out my concentration of NaCl to be 0.050 molar or mole per decimeter cubed. I can express that as square brackets because square brackets represents a concentration. So here is my concentration of NaCl. Just remember to go from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed, we would need to divide by a thousand. And if we needed to go the other way from decimeters cubed to centimeters cubed, we would need to multiply by a thousand. And that's the same if we have liters and mils. Second example, what is the amount of calcium hydroxide in mole present in 1.2 decimeters cubed of lime water, which has a concentration of 0.500? So we need to find the number of moles. So that is the N. So the easiest way to remember the formula, N equals C times V, and we're after the number of moles, so we can just substitute in the numbers. The concentration was given in the question, 0 0.5, and the volume was given in the question, 1.2 decimeters cubed. So we can simply plug those in to get 0 0.600 mole. Another example, calculate the concentration in mole per decimeters cubed when 45 grams of sucrose is dissolved in 200 centimeters cubed of water. Now this is a two-step process because we've been given a mass in grams and we need to work it out in moles before we can find the concentration. So the first step is to, to determine the number of moles of sucrose. Number of moles equals mass over molar mass. So the mass was 45 and the molar mass of sucrose is 342.34, which will give us our amount in mole, 0 0.131. Once we've got the amount in mole, now we can work out the concentration. So the square brackets of sucrose equals, now concentration, mole over volume using the formula triangle, 0 0.131 over the volume in decimeters cubed, 0 0.200. That gives us a concentration of 0 0.657, and the units would be big M molarity, or mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, the last example for this is basically going in reverse. Calculate the mass in grams of the substance stated that will be required to make up 10 centimeters cubed, of 0 0.825 mole NaOH. So we need to work out how many grams of this chemical we need to make up that concentration and that volume. So again, it's a two-step process. The first thing we need to do is to determine the number of moles of NaOH we need. So number of moles, using the formula triangle, N equals C times V. So our concentration was 0 0.825, our volume in this case was 10 centimeters cubed, so I divide that by 1,000 to determine the volume, which is 0 0.010 decimeters cubed. And that allows me to find the number of moles of NaOH, 0 0.00825 mole. 
Once I've got the number of moles, now I can find the mass. So the next step is to find the mass of NaOH by using the formula from earlier on in the topic, number of mass equals mole times molar mass. So we have our number of moles, we multiply that by the molar mass of NaOH, and that tells us that we need 0 0.330 grams of NaOH to make up that concentration of solution. Okay, last little bit for the video, parts per million. Parts per million is a different unit of concentration and it basically denotes one in a million. And it's very useful to, for describing concentrations found in water or pollutants in air. Now, one part per million equals one bit per one million parts. And there's a couple of easy ratios for this. One milligram per decimeter cubed equals one part per million. So that's a straight relationship. One milligram per litre equals one part per million. Another way to calculate parts per million is to work out the total mass of the components divided by the total mass of the solution and then multiply it by a million. It's really important that you remember these two little conversions. They're not given in the data book and the IB makes mention of knowing how to do things in parts per million. So here's an example. A particular cordial contains 0.003 grams per litre of the synthetic yellow food dye tartarazine. What is the concentration in parts per million? So we've been given a concentration in grams per litre, and it's a very small amount in grams per litre. And we need to work out what that is in parts per million. So the easiest way to do this one is to use the little formula. Because we've been told about how much mass and how much of the solution, we can use the formula to work out parts per million quite easily. So the mass of the solute was 0 0.003, and they said it was per one litre, and one litre is a thousand. So a th one litre equals a thousand grams. So we have 0 0.003 divided by a thousand times a million, which gives us three parts per million. So that's a simple case of just using the formula to get it into parts per million. Again, one litre equals a thousand grams or a thousand mils, and that's an assumption. We've assumed that this, this solution has a density of one, which is a fine assumption to make. Sometimes, however, in different topics, we need to make sure that we use the density, but in this type of concept, it's fine to make that assumption. The second example, a 750 ml sample of water from Port Phillip Bay was found to contain 6,000 milligrams of mercury. What is the concentration of mercury in parts per million? Now we could go down the same path of using the formula, but another way of doing this is to set up a ratio. So we've been given 750 mils, which is 750 centimeters cubed, and it contains 6,000 milligrams of mercury. Well, what if I had a thousand mils of water or one decimeter cubed? How many milligrams of mercury would that contain? So I'm just setting up a simple ratio. Now what we can do is set up a ratio, cross, multiply, and divide to find X, our unknown. And X is our amount of mercury. So what I would do here is cross multiply 750 times X equals 6,000 times 1,000. And then I would simply solve for X. It works out that X is equal to 8,000 milligrams. So what I've done here is I've got it to a milligrams per litre or per decimeter cubed relationship. So the concentration is 800 milligrams per litre or per decimeter cubed. Now back in the last slide, I said that one milligram per decimeter cubed equals one part per million. So here we have 8,000 milligrams per decimeter cubed, which means we have a concentration of 8,000 parts per million. So that's two different ways of working out the concentration in parts per million. You pick the one that works best for you and the situation. Okay, volume 10, some top tips. Make sure you know the formula. The easiest one to remember is N equals C times V or use the formula triangle. Make sure you check the question. Are they asking you for the mass in grams or the mole in molarity? And make sure that you know how to convert from milligrams per, per decimeter cube to parts per million. And as always, keep the numbers in your calculator and round at the very end.
Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.